when steam motor coach number one was built a century ago in 1905, it was the newest thing. And then when it was brought to run between Corn and Hawker, well, it changed people's lives. So you could get on in Hawker early morning and by the time you got down to Corn, you could connect with the train that went all the way to Adelaide the same day. Same day every day, you could get to the big smoke. That was a revolution. hundred years later, it's simply a transport of delight on the world famous Pitchy Ritchie Railway in the Flinders Ranges. So all aboard the priceless and beautifully preserved coffee pot. Your first or second? Which one? Second one. Oh, that's good there. Just going in, where can you manage? It might look like something straight out of the Thomas the Tank Engine train shed, but the coffee pot was built to order for the Great Northern Division of the South Australian Railways. The little red locomotive was built in Leeds in England and the exquisite timber passenger coach came from workshops in Birmingham. It's actually a steam-powered rail carriage, a steam-powered rail car. The, the forerunner of the petrol and the diesel rail cars that uh, we got to know in the, the, the later years of last century. And it's now a thing of beauty in the Pitchy Ritchie Railway Preservation Society's collection. Hayden Hart is a self-proclaimed steam nut. He got to know every inch of pipe and piston on the coffee pot as supervisor of its restoration. He was only a teenager when the gallant volunteer group began, so he also enjoys a personal but painful relationship with every sleeper on the track between Corn and Port Augusta. You can see why it's a train buff's dream machine. It puffed its way up and over the Flinders here and three times a week between the great train town Corn and Hawker to the north for nearly three decades until 1932. Then, well, it sat under cover in Corn for 25 years until they pulled the shed down, so it landed on the railway platform with Alice Springs. Thankfully, in the 70s, the National Trust agreed to send it back. And they were good enough to return it to Corn, which is its only home base. It's only ever worked out of Corn as a home depot. Eight years of hard weekend volunteer labour later, and the coffee pot was on the boil again. Now its passengers come from near and far to smell the soot and hear that steam-driven music and enjoy a touch of style. Beautiful fittings in first class on the coffee pot, including electric light in 1906, the first train in South Australia. Lots of houses didn't have it then. Of course, things are rather different in through here. That's second class. They're short on oak panelling and some pressed tin pattern ceiling, but it doesn't really matter. With scenery like this out the window, who cares? Clickety clack along this tightly winding passage through the southern Flinders. Could be a regular run of old, or maybe more likely a special charter trip. On weekends, our miniature mountain climber often took sports groups and revellers up and down the line. Could have been a picnic sports day in Parachilna, a cricket match in Oruru, even a country dance at Woolshed Flat. Ah, this is all so agreeable inside and out. And then there's the romance of the name. The coffee pot? Well, it harks back to its temperamental days in the 1920s when often it ran out of water mid-journey. So as an emergency supply, they lashed an extra keg on each side of the driver's cabin so they could top up. One of the wags in the railways apparently chalked cocoa on one and coffee on the other and it got the nickname coffee pot because I think a lot of the drivers thought that the, the boiler was that small, it was only good for, for um, boiling, the, boiling the billy pretty much. <laughs> the name stuck. But wait, on this trip, there's more. The Pitchy Ritchie narrow gauge line itself has a big claim to fame too. It was the first leg of the ambitiously named Great Northern Line. In 1876, the governor opened it with predictions of much trade with China and India. Sound familiar? Well, it took a century plus for the GAN line to reach Darwin. But way back in 1917, the transcontinental running the other way from Sydney to Perth came through this historic stretch in the Pitchy Ritchie Pass. The future king, Edward VII, even made the trip in 1920. And the old gander to the red centre? Well, it rattled through here till the 1950s. 
for a, a little quaint branch line in magnificent Flinders Ranges scenery, it's very, very much got a, a national component to it. It sure has, and we are very lucky that the Pitchy Ritchie Volunteer Mob are preserving a piece of railway history that runs through a patch of ancient landscape. It's all still here, much as it was a hundred years ago. Love the coffee pot. Pitchy Ritchie Society runs a great program of trains between Corn and Woolshed Flat or Port Augusta on weekends and school holidays, it's full steam. So give them a call for more information and to book, of course. That's surreal, isn't it, from one of the highest points of South Australia to one of the lowest in minutes, but spectacular. Now, as you can see from the sign as we leave you today and the passengers on board, the Pitchy Ritchie Railway takes all kinds of people. So if you haven't been on the train, you haven't been to the Flinders. See you soon. Bye.